Sparks Lab here at Riverview Art in Lynchburg, Virginia, and we're going to be seeing how a rhizo or rhizo or rhizo, how is it even said, Stephen? So I found that it's a rhizo based Rizograph. on what they have on their YouTube. And okay. A lot, a lot of people say it different ways, but I'm pretty sure it's Rizograph. Rizograph, okay. Well, tell me what you do here at Sparks Lab. Uh, so, by the way, this is Stephen Kissel, yes. if you didn't already know. <laughs> I've already like said his name like five million times, so Stephen. Yeah, so I'm the Education and Media Manager here at Ruby's Art Space. Uh, basically, I do a lot of graphic design, a lot of marketing, social media stuff, but I also handle this lab um, and doing classes with elementary school, high school, um, we have some adult classes and like other workshops as well. Um, so we have a lot of different things going on all at once. Cool. So um, one of the things you have here, you have a, a large format Epson printer, you have a whole digital lab, um, but you have this special little machine right behind here, um, the Ruzo, I guess is how it's said, as the kids say nowadays, and this is the easy 221U. Tell us about this machine. Yeah, so we were trying to get a Rizzo for a while um, just because there isn't access to one kind of in our immediate area. Um, so we were looking for a chance to kind of have something a little unique for the lab. Um, this model uh, I think was from 2009 if I remember correctly. Um, so we were looking for <clears throat> something that was a little more recent um, which has made it a little harder to find supplies that are used. Um, but as far as new supplies, it's still pretty easy to get and have access to. Um, so yeah, it just has uh, one drum in here. Um, it doesn't have like a PC interface or anything like that, so you do have to scan everything in. Um, but it's really efficient, um, it's pulling great prints, um, it's been a lot of fun to use. The newer machines, those have PC interface, correct? Um, I think this one actually you can get a module for it. Um, I haven't come across one yet. Um, some of the newer ones, especially ones that I've seen that have like two drums in there, those have it. Um, which would be a nice addition if we can get one, but as is, expensive. yeah, yeah, it's like as it is, like this is working pretty well, and it's not hard to like do a few laser copies and scan those in grayscale. So, so this is a, um, it looks like a co regular copier, but there are some major differences from a regular laser or tuner copier printer. So, what are those differences? Like, is it black and white? Is it color? Yeah, yeah. So the nice thing about this. Um, it kind of looks like a big copier, but kind of functions in a way like a screen printer. Um, Rizzo, they started off with mimeograph machines, so it kind of functions a little like that. It has a big drum with a stencil that pulls from like a master sheet, um, and it basically creates the image in that, and then as the paper runs through, it pushes ink onto that once the paper's on the roll. Um, so you can run through each color individually, and you can have like more saturated, like bright like spot colors. Um, it is uh, soy ink and it's a little bit transparent, so when you lay those inks on top of each other, you end up getting different colors. Um, so we actually have a few um, color charts here that are from SVA um, that just kind of show some of the options. We don't have that many colors yet, we're still kind of starting with just four to kind of get a good range of colors. Um, but these uh, are some of the variations and different ways that you can kind of get a lot of color out of just like a few different inks. Oh, that's pretty cool. What sizes it, um, can this print? Uh, this one, it can take 11 by 17 paper. Um, the actual image on there only goes up to about legal size, mm -hmm. roughly. Um, so you can print um, letter and legal um, pretty easily. And if you want to have like a little bit of border, you can have 11 by 17 and do that. Um, but it does go, uh, basically I found from like 20 pounds up to about 90 pounds. Okay. I haven't experimented with anything heavier than that yet. Um, but those seem to work totally fine. So Awesome. So when you're saying that there's one drum, you can do one color at a time, mm -hmm. it's more like screen printing where you have to do one full color. So you have to put the paper in. Exactly, yeah. So you end up having to run um, basically each layer separately. Um, it's good to have like a little bit of drying time. The one thing with this ink, it doesn't fully dry. Um, so if you do it too quickly, you may end up with like roller marks and stuff like that. Um, which I think is to be expected to a certain extent just with this process and everything, but um, especially with going from light to dark um, with the blue ink, you want to make sure if you have anything on top of that that you let it dry and kind of chill for no a little kidding, bit. Right? So. Um, so there's very small margin for perfection prints every time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one, it's so far so good with like registering and everything like that. Um, it hasn't been too far off. Um, and the nice thing is with the tray that uh, paper sits in to feed into the printer, you can adjust that a little bit without having to like 
rescan and make a whole new master or anything. You can just kind of adjust that and kind of even out where the like layers are hitting. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess what we need to do now is I think we need to make something. Yeah, with this machine. So, so you can show us how everything works. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what we did is over here uh, on the computer, I scanned in um, some original artwork and um, I scanned it in and then I digitally did a layer. I did two different layers. I did a pink layer and a blue layer. So we're doing a one page zine today. This is a zine that we're doing and it's pink and blue. Now it's gonna look different because this is a um, inkjet. This is the workforce of uh, the Epson. So it's gonna look a little bit different. There's gonna be some color overlaps the way that it looks on the black. So uh, we're gonna be doing that. And you said that the pink is fluorescent. So it's gonna be a much more brighter than this, yes. which I'm pretty stoked about. This is kind of an example of the two colors. Oh wow. That yeah, that's gonna be much more like vibrant. So after I did each layer, and I um, illustrated and then had the pink illustration layer and I did the blue illustration layer. That way I could, you know, keep track of them. Then I transferred them to being um, black and then I exported each layer. So this is, if I'm not mistaken, um, this is the blue layer. And we have it as a black and white copy. And then we have, this is the pink layer. So that is what it's going to be printed out in pink. But it's really important to have um, any of your, your tones and all that, your, um, your grayscale tones in black because this only reads black, correct? Yeah, I've scanned some things in color, but it just doesn't really work as well. Um, so it's a lot easier having your grayscale layers separated. Um, we do that. So. Awesome. I'm pretty mm -hmm. stoked to see how this turns out. We're going to be doing it on legal. This is a legal size on one page zine so we get better maximum size and coverage. And I'm stoked. Let's roll. And it is really important to have uncoated paper, correct? Yes, yes. Um, if you have anything that's coated, it's not going to adhere to that. Um, so uncoated paper, kind of within that weight range that I mentioned, is usually what you want to stick with. So. Awesome. <laughs> we are going to be doing the which layer first? So you work light to dark. Okay. So. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get it set in here. And it has nice marks on here so you kind of have your sizing set up. You can put registration marks if you need, but it's going to cut into your overall image is what you were telling me. Yeah, yeah. So um, this, uh, usually I give like a little bit of a margin just to be safe. Um, and that way we don't have to worry about it. The nice thing is it can automatically resize things on here. Um, so if you have like a legal size image and you want it to be an eight and a half by 11, you can adjust these and that's how it will make it on the master. Okay. Um, so especially if you have something that's, you know, hundred percent, it's one to one and you're seeing that it's getting cut off a little bit, you can actually increase the border by a little bit. So you mark it down to 94% and it'll kind of squish it in a little bit. And scale but that means every time you're like wasting a master. So about how much do masters cost? Uh, they're pretty reasonable. Um, we ended up doing it was like, I think like $70 for two. Um, and the rolls are pretty big. Um, we've gone through quite a few masters already and we still have barely even touched the first roll that we're on. Oh wow, so, cool. Um, same with the inks. Um, they're pretty affordable around that price for two tubes. And I think you get like 10,000 sheets per tube. Or that's that. really that so that was my next question was the um, overall economy of printing like this for let's say an artist um, compared to multi-laser process what's the average cost for prints um it's maybe like uh, a little under a dollar masters maybe a little more um, the nice thing is once you kind of have everything running like the upkeep and everything is not too expensive it's pretty efficient um, which is what it was designed to be um, cool. The drums and the printer itself are where you run into more costs, basically. Yeah, because you um, were saying the drum cost more than the printer did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, had, we ended up getting ours refurbished. Uh, so in this case, the drums, which you ended up purchasing new, um, which were imported Ooh. in uh, with basically any color that you could want, um, those were more than what we did for the printer. And it's <laughs> advisable not to just switch out ink colors, but to have a drum 
for each color so there's no like cross contamination yeah yeah you can convert the drums over say if we had the fluorescent pink and we wanted to switch it to red or something like that you can do that um, but you do end up losing quite a bit of ink as you try and like purge out like all the pink that's in there um, you end up having to kind of run through a bunch of sheets um, and you run through a bunch of ink to try and get that through the system for the drum so just best to have another drum. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely not like, you know, throw ink in it and call it a day like a like an Epson inkjet printer or a toner. It's a little more into it, but well let's see because I wanna see what this is gonna look like. Anyway, we've made the master and it right. just printed. So this one out. is the first one that came through. So it's a little light. Um we've got some of the rolling marks that you're seeing on there. Um, but we'll run a couple more just to see where it goes. Right. Oh, 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 it just really shoots it out. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll like go out of there. So you can kind of see even on this is the second one that's in here, but you can kind of see on here where the ink is coming through a little more on it. Now. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. And the roller marks, that's something that we can like clean the roller and get those off of there unless you don't mind it. Um, so well, I mean, I've seen like from other like prints from going to SPX mm -hmm. where that kind of adds to the like one of a kind uniqueness of this printing style. Same thing with like screen printing. There's always something mm -hmm. that's slightly different each time you do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, especially since we're going to be doing another layer of blue on top, you may not even really see it. Um, this is probably just residue from like a previous run. But, you, I mean, we can even run like 50 or more. I mean, the nice thing with this is you can have high print runs that's mm -hmm. been designed for. Um, as long as we have the paper, it won't really use that much ink. So, yeah. Right. You know, just so, like grab pretty a much what, what you did was you mm -hmm. put the, the black layer in there, you scanned, you made a, ma um, a master, correct? That's mm -hmm. what they're called? Yep, yep. So and we then we did the pink there. first because you go light to dark. So, this is pretty, this is really neat. Set up yeah, too. yeah. So what it ends up doing, um, since the master stays on there until you run another one through it, I can kind of show you guys. You won't be able to see it too much. Um, but basically, the master for this image is wrapped around the roll right now, uh, and that'll stay on there. So if for some reason you need to need to run more, um, we can set it aside and then come back to it and run that same layer again. Oh, neat. So it's only once you actually do a whole new master. I think the next zine fest we have. I wouldn't mind having a few extra for um, mm -hmm. possible giveaways on the channel as well. But you know, the next thing we have is Hill City. So yeah. I definitely, this is a, um, I think I put it on here too. Yeah. Brought to you by Zine Cuisine Channel and Chris Keller printed at Sparks Lab in Lynchburg, Virginia <laughs> on a Rizograph. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to do the pink run right. and then we're going to do the blue. So let's check it out.
one of the most fun parts of this process is the fact that the registration and all that, I mean, there's a definite trial and error, which is kind of the joy of it. And everything's slightly sometimes off. And that happens, you know. Um, so we have a couple where they just are just the most slight bit off. But you know what? I kind of dig it. And it works honestly. Like the Nom Nom, it looks pretty much on and i don't care if my face is that yeah most of the other areas here look like they look pretty much on i mean i think we're gonna just run with this because i, I kind of dig it it looks cool and, and also good evidence of the ink not drying is that you can smudge this yes so and smudging happens like it's it a certain way it ends up looking well this one's actually better a little, a little. Uh, honestly, I really don't mind it. My face is off anyway, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the rest of it like looks pretty registered. Like this one, obviously, is not good, but because your hair is like, it's like you got scared and your hair just went. Like, well, my hair it's does like, do that anyway. It's like you had so. a wig that just like flew off. But the ones that we um, really kind of like mess up, this one right here, which just went in backwards. But you know, honestly, I do that when I'm making any zines. Oh, yeah. And that. And not me putting the scan in backwards, it was me putting the paper in the back. <laughs> so that's why when I went to go make the new master or reprint it, I ended up hitting the wrong thing and making a new master instead of switching the paper around. Which but, happens. You know, trial and error. You know, yeah. It works. But I mean, that's it's pretty cool. It's a drum. Good night, drum. Maybe it should be like a whole book. Like, instead of, like, Goodnight Moon, it should be, like, Goodnight Drum. <laughs> Goodnight, Rizo Machine, Rizzo, whatever your name is. Yeah, so there is a lot of, like, compatibility things. Um, this one can use some of the different ink types, but the drums are pretty specific to the EZ models. Um, but I think, like, the F, we have, like, a yellow that's an F type ink and a few other different So, types. are there, I know with um, some I've picked up, there's metallic inks too? Yeah, yeah, so they have a lot of like special inks. Um, they have like some of these that are the more basic ones um, and they have some other fluorescents and metallics. Um, some shops even have like clear that they use for like thermography and stuff like that. Oh, to kind neat. Of get a raised effect. Um, so we don't really have those capabilities yet or anything, but um, you can get pretty far with just kind of having like a faux like CMYK look. Um, we've done a few, which I've got some here that are misregistered that are multiple colors. Um, somewhere in here. So, like, this is like a misregistered one, which I used um, three colors for that. So, that was fluorescent pink, the blue, um, and the yellow. Um, and we also have black here uh, as well. So, you can kind of get, like, if you have photos or anything like that, or you're just trying to reproduce. Um, full color image you can kind of get that and there's a lot so of that's what you're doing with this one was yeah, it was a full yeah. color minus the black um but you can kind of get a similar effect so it's kind of like working with like half tone patterns and stuff like that yeah yeah which it kind of creates um with some images kind of on its own just through the printer um you can also set up your images that way um which works really well um but you can kind of create your own cmyk depending on what ink colors you have i've seen some where Instead of having like a cyan or the blue, they end up using like the white teal or something like that, and it gets a little bit different effect with. Yeah, I, saw, oh, I think we have one. Um, there's a print that is like a Wonder Woman, and it's like done with pink, yellow, and like a turquoise color, and it's really mm -hmm. fluorescent pink. It looks really cool. Yeah, yeah, and definitely um, check out like Stencil Wiki. We have a page on there. Um, it's stencil.wiki, um, and that's a really good resource for. Pretty much anything you want to know, um, troubleshooting stuff, seeing where there are other printers, like different art fairs going on. We're going to be putting that, we'll put that in the links below as well. Um, now, are we the closest uh, Rizzo in as this far, area? As far as I know, um, the probably next closest, I think there's some kind of in North Carolina, and then Richmond um, definitely has some uh, at VCU, and there are some other print shops. That's right, the there. VCU lab. Uh, I think we're going to be, uh, hopefully in the future, doing a tour there. Maybe you can come along. We can go check out the zine yeah, yeah, library, think, which should be really cool. Yeah, I think that'll be I think that'll be great. I mean, field I trip, field trip. Probably the closest, like at least in our area. Mm -hmm. So, so um, tell us about... 
this. Yeah, so uh, before we ended up getting this, uh, we had already kind of planned on doing a comic and zine fair here in Lynchburg. Um, just because we don't have any comic shops really, we don't have access to a lot of these things. Um, and we wanted to bring in artists and writers and printmakers and everybody to kind of bring that into our community a little bit. So on March 21st, we're going to have the first one. Um, we have like over 30 creators that are going to be here and we're going to go ahead and have that the first one. So March 21st, Saturday, you can come out for it. This is Chris with Dean Cuisine signing off. Bon Appetit! Do 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 do